good day yung sa we are already in our second week of creative writing and this time we will be discussing um, the ingredients in imaginative writing which are imagery, figures of speech, and diction. Of course, we have to refresh ourselves with our knowledge of figures of speech. When we say figures of speech, this is, this is a figurative language which involves connotative meanings so that we as writers can have vivid artistic style in writing our poems, short stories. There are a lot of figures of speech that you have already learned, but for this one, I will be adding a more advanced kinds or types of figures of speech, starting with allegory. When we say allegory, this is a figure of speech that is kind of a metaphor, but it is an extension. When we say extension, the metaphor in the allegory, in the in the allegory, uses a large, complex ideas, and then transforming it into a more approachable manner. So, when we say allegory. You are comparing a larger, more complex idea or concept and then transforming that into a more approachable idea or concept. So let's have an example. In Sonnet 18 by William Shakespeare, the underlying italicized phrase is a summer day. Now, if you read the first line, Shall I compare thee to a summer day? The persona in the poem is comparing the I to a summer day. Now, all throughout the sonnet, the persona is comparing his or her lover to the characteristic of a summer day. So, it is an extended comparison, longer comparison. So that is what we call a leg. Second figure of speech is allusion. When we say allusion, you as a writer, you use a person, place, or thing, or event as a reference. It can be real or imaginary. It can be a reference to a, to a previously written fiction, a folklore or mythology, historical events, or biblical concepts. You're using those as a reference. Well, the Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. The person is asking the Raven if there is really a bomb in Jalil. Okay? The phrase bomb in Jalil is mentioned in Genesis chapter 7. So it's a biblical reference. That is what called allusion. Antithesis is a figure of it's a figure of speech that puts together two opposite ideas to achieve a contrasting effect. Well, if by Rudyard Kipling. In Kipling, he juxtaposes a clause that provides the reason for the series of conditions, which when these when clauses seem to propose a contradictory element to what is provided in the conditions of the if premises. For example, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. So the when clause, when all about you are losing theirs, is in contrast with the phrase, if you can keep your head. So, Rudyard Kipling combines two opposite ideas so that when the reader reads it, it creates a contrasting effect. How can you keep your head when all about you are losing their heads and blaming it on you? So, it's kind of contradicting. That is what we call 
anti-racist. Now, apostrophe is addressing something or someone that is not present, that is absent, or that is dead, or it is an inanimate object from Spring by Edna St. Vincent Millay. The persona is talking to April, which obviously is a month of the year. So how can we talk to something that is dead or something that is not here, something that is not living? That is what we call apostrophe. Hyperbole, you already know this. When you say hyperbole, you as a writer, you're trying to extreme exaggeration. A Red Red Rose by Robert Burns. So the persona in the poem proposes that his dog will not die even if the seas will run dry, even if the rocks will melt with the sun. So that's kind of uh, an exaggeration of how you love a person, right? So that is what we call hyperbole. You already know this. It shows contradiction between what is said versus what is actually meant by the author. So contradicting what you say is not really what you need. For example, Lord Byron, she walks in beauty. So Lord Byron compares the beauty of a woman to a day being denied by all qualities of brightness and beauty. So, how can you compare a woman to a day? And when you say day, it's a light. It's light of day. And then you comp and then you describe that light of day by being less. Is being replaced by a paper concept. So, this is 
Scepter to Mars, and then I will use Metonymy. I will use something that is closely related to that major idea that I want to express. From song by Christina Jardina Reset, When I am dead, universe, sing no sad songs for me. Plant thou no roses in my head, nor shame inside me. So the head there is substituted to a more complicated system to move death bed okay. so that the bone does not that does not skin so hard, does not seem so heavy or sorrowful. So you use the cotton to balance the bone. Healing pain. How can a pain be healing if it's pain, right? So that's kind of an upset. mouth and tongue, these are not the only ones we use for praising the Lord, right? So, the mouth and tongue represent our entire being, our entire person. So, Sinikdoki uses the words mouth and tongue to represent our being, our person. So, that that's Sinikdoki. The mouth and tongue are used to represent the entire being of a person. 